nearly a full house. Um, I think everyone's a bit excited to see some never seen before pictures of Joe. <laughs> Oh, well, no, when, when I was putting it together, he was saying, oh, please, you know, go easy on the pictures and the stories of me. And I said, Joe, you know, for once, this is about me, not you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, I was really inspired from the testimonies of last year, watching everybody share um, personal things. And I think when they're on the walk, we sometimes don't, we want to be careful, we don't want to boast, we don't want to be proud, but at the same time, it's good, it's good to share and it's good to encourage one another because iron does sharpen iron and there'll be people watching online that can relate to my story. So yeah, it's, it's a perfect opportunity to when we're all in one room and you know, it, it's just great, hallelujah. But as you can hear by my voice, um, I've got a bit of a cold, but as Jack said to me today, when we're weak, he is made strong. So that's, that's what we hope tonight. And we, we pray over this testimony. Uh, it's been seven years in the making. And I've been telling people, oh, you better be coming to watch my testimony. And everyone says, oh, that's funny, actually. I don't really know your testimony, just Joe's. So let's uh, get started. <laughs> so here is uh, seven years of plenty in a nutshell. <laughs> So um, 2012, um, when me and Joe met. <laughs> so from Leeds Festival to Sukkot Festival, um, from the Magaluf Strip to the Jordan River. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, just, yeah, like anybody's testimony, you never think you'll, you'll be where you are, but praise you are. Um, and also, as you can see, uh, BC, Becca before Christ and uh, <laughs> AD Becca is, looks a little bit different but yeah he really does change our hearts desires and our outward appearance is always a reflection of what's going on on the inside so just just thank thank the father that he's um, dealt with me at a young age you know there's still things to come but hallelujah <laughs> that um, we can be reformed and our hearts can really be changed um, so yeah, some of these pictures are uh, funny and we'll go into the years um, as this uh, presentation goes on. So starting back from the beginning of my life, from a pagan land. <laughs> so like many of us or many people in the, um, this fellowship and all over the world, we, we don't grow up as Christians. Um, and I can't say that I had any bit of Christian um, advice in my upbringing <clears throat> you know there was nothing untoward it, it had a great childhood no trauma i was a very loved and i always say that my family has really taught me a lot very patient people and um, i think that's why i can be so patient with with joe and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so i've got a lot to thank them for um, <laughs> I was a first child, first grandchild, so like Jonah, I was very spoiled, very loved. Um, you know, it, it's great. It's, I can't knock where I'm from. It's a beautiful place. A few people came over to the Alaman for mine and Joe's wedding ceremony, and it is a very, very uh, lovely place and great childhood, great growing up, and you could always go camping. It, you know, it's not like I grew up in a city, so very good. Um, However, they do uh, have very pagan um, traditions. So when I came on this walk, some of my family said to me, oh, you're not saying hi to the fairies anymore? Because <laughs> every time you go past the airport, to go off the airport when you come in, to go to your house, you go past the fairy bridge, and everyone goes, hi, fairies. And I, I just started going silent, and they were like, what about the fairies? <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's pagan, it's pagan. Um, but yeah, no Christian influence unless um, a baby baptism for a party for my mum and dad is classed as that. But yeah, you probably listen to this mum. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've included this slide because I don't want to be too negative about my upbringing. Although it had no Christian influence, um, I love this scripture. It said, Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, 
even though they do not have the law, they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts. Their consciousness are bearing witness and their thoughts are sometimes accusing them and at other times defending them. <laughs> so <clears throat> they sometimes teach me a lot. Sometimes I go there and they have more patience than me in a situation. So I can't fault them. You know, it's just, it's, it's a blessing. I, I love them guys. So that's why you're on here. <laughs> So yeah, let's go back to where, where I was and who I was. <clears throat> Here's some more uh, lovely pictures of myself and Joe. Um, and I feel like this scripture was written about me. It says, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, Brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather lovers of God. And I was a, a lover of pleasure rather than lover of God. Um, I always was looking for the best new experience, always wanted to try something new. I went to my first festival when I was 15. I think when you're from a small town, you just want to grow up really quickly and you just want to try some things new and you're always comparing yourself to maybe the older people and you, you just want to get out there and do that. So. It's, it's good in a way. I got it out of my system by a very young age. So I'm thankful that, you know, I did that and got it out of my system. But at the same time, um, you can bring in a lot of darkness into your life. You can, um, you, can, you can just do things that aren't meant to be doing. You know, there, there's still strongholds in your life that you can, you, can, you can introduce by these. Being a lover of yourself and not a lover of God by being a lover of pleasure. But as you can see at this festival, you can, you can do and have amazing experiences and be a lover of God. God gives us festivals. He gives us this festival where we rejoice. I'm not being funny, but this is the best festival I've ever been to anyone else. <laughs> I know everyone's got a bit of a cold, but there was not, it's nothing like that Leeds, the feeling after Leeds festival. And you feel like you've got bags of demons on you compared to this, I promise you. So hallelujah that um, we're here and we can all rejoice and uh, have a good time. So yeah, moving forward to uh, my first Bible. Although I wasn't a believer at the time, um, for some reason or another, I decided to study RE, religious education at A level. And it was my first experience of reading any kind of Bible. It was just the New Testament like, but still, um, they give you these little Gideon Bibles. If anybody's grown up in the UK, you'll remember these ones that they give you in school. And, you just had to read them and it was part of our um, studies to um, decode and write uh, essays on um, the Sermon on the Mount. So this is my first experience ever reading any Bible and I remember saying to the teacher, why is it written so old fashioned? I'll never be able to understand this, you know, I'm not going to do well in this exam if I can't understand it. And he was like, you're going to have to, you know. but. When I was thinking back of that experience, it just, this scripture came to mind and it says, um, the person without the spirit does not accept things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them a foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. So I didn't have the spirit then at all. I had different spirits. I had spirits of the flesh. I had spirits of myself. You know, I was only getting the A-levels because I wanted to go to university. I wanted to get a good job. And, <clears throat> excuse me, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I think it's great to have ambitions and it's great to do something that you love. But I wasn't doing that because I wanted to do something I loved. I wanted to do that so I could compare myself to others, so I could get the good grades and earn a certain amount of money. And it was all the flesh. And I was enslaved by them things. You know, I was, I remember actually the night before this exam, I was so stressed and it was my first ever experience of insomnia. And I remember waking my mum up and she was like, what are you waking me for? Like, you're not, you're not a baby anymore. I'm just like, just go away basically. And I was just so stressed because you put so much pressure on yourself and kids are under so much pressure to just get them grades and all for this, for this rat race mentality. And, you know, it's not about that. We have promises of other things through God. He promises to provide for us. So, you know, it's, it's balance. Um, but looking at that scripture and um, considering things foolishness, in my RE class, there was a Muslim girl. And I remember she said to me, oh yeah, um, we don't eat pork. 
And I just looked at her like, oh, so you've never ate bacon? She was like, no, Anna, I wouldn't. And I was thinking, I could never do that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me now. So, so yeah, no matter where you are, if you're on, reading this, watching this online or if you're a young person today, never um, underestimate the power of time and healing and life experience. Um, I know your mum might be telling you to go read the Bible and what you're watching is a sin. And you know, your mum is probably right, but um, never underestimate the power of time and the spirit and pray. And you, you won't even want to watch them things and God will take them away from you in, in time. It's, it's just a matter of introducing the spirit. And if you don't have the spirit, you won't have the understanding. So I, um, I would encourage you to ask for the spirit, introduce the spirit into your life. Ask it to come over you, ask him to convict you what you're doing is wrong. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that it will happen in time. Um, so amen to that. <clears throat> but then my second Bible is when I was a little bit more on the walk, I got given a scriptures. And that was even harder to understand. It was like reading something in French, Yahovah, and all these big words. I was thinking, again, I'm never going to understand that. So that scripture was still applicable to me because I hadn't introduced the spirit. And the spirit is, it, it, it overflows and, it's, and, it's, and it just keeps giving. It's like it says, it's a living waters and it'll keep giving you where you are in your life. So you will understand these things in time. You just need to keep focusing on God and asking for the Holy Spirit to convict you and talk to you. So there you go. So just another little um, snapshot to show where I was. At this point, I had met Joe, and um, we went on a bit of a crazy roller coaster um, of parties, drunkenness, drugs. I've used this scripture to just kind of sum up where we were. It's Galatians 5 and 18, 19. And, it's some, a scripture that you don't ever really want to be caught guilty under because it says you'll not inherit the kingdom. And that's, that's pretty serious, you know. Uh, Paul doesn't just say these things for, for, yet, for any old reason. Um, it's, it, it's big and it's heavy. And it says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, fel selfish ambition, dissentious fact factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom. And I've used the um, translation of the word sorcery and it says the use or administering of drugs. So it's big, it's big guys. I know some people can in translate as pharmacia and pharmaceuticals, but personally I believe that it's drugs. Um, I, I took drugs and I can openly say that things started happening to me and um, I was the biggest one to say what you know a portal there's only one dimension to this life there's, there's no other dimension but there is and as it quite clearly states here you'll not inherit the kingdom for that reason because you are then introducing the kingdom of darkness and not the kingdom of light and you know, it, it doesn't end well, basically, especially if you were like me and Joe, um, coming out of our hippie era, wearing matching sheep's coat, sheep, sheep, <laughs> sheepskin coats, and going to one of the most darkest places, uh, which is Berlin on the left. We went to the Pergamon Museum, as you might have known from Joe's testimony, but in case you haven't heard it, it's where the walls of Babylon are. So th these things have energy, you know, they were in Babylon, they were enslaving the Hebrews with these walls and we went there looking for some kind of enlightenment when we were smoking weed and we didn't get the kind of enlightenment that we were looking for, let me just tell you that. Joe was like, I don't think we can touch it and me being this rebel always wanting to do something different, I was like, yeah, let's just touch it, nothing will happen. Anyway, um, lo and behold, we um, got back to the room where we were staying and we were just going to go for a little nap, you know, as you do when you don't have kids. Um, <laughs> on holiday, you know, you can do what you want. <laughs> and we, we, we fell asleep and next thing we know, obviously Joe plays a guitar. At this time he was really just starting to get back into playing the guitar as, well actually he's only, he'd only just learnt the guitar then, so, you know, see him up there rocking out, he's not been playing it for that long, so 
Kudas show. <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was making these crazy noises. And it was basically, if you heard a guitar tune out, it goes like tick tock, tick like it's this horrible noise, noises like you would, something that you would have seen out of paranormal activity. And that's what it was. It was paranormal activity because we'd opened this gateway by taking the drugs and we'd gone to a demonic place. And at the time, Joe was actually wearing seat seats because we were starting to come onto the walk and we'd started to go to a Sabbath fellowship and we, we were listening. We weren't Jamar and we weren't taking it on board. We were still doing what we wanted to do. But um, that's when the darkness can get in because you have, you have your foot in both camps and it can be really dangerous. Um, so obviously we didn't learn the lesson from, from that, that, that time. So a couple of months later, we did the same. We went to Edinburgh and again, another dark place. We've seen a lot of um, castles there. It's very royal there, there, Prince Andrew and all that kind of stuff. It, it's got a dark spirit about it there. Uh, it's a lovely place, obviously, but not if you're going to go and smoke weed and say you're a tour keeper, but, you know, opening up de demonic portals you're going to have a demonic experience. So <clears throat> again, we, we thought the police was following us around. It was just completely demonic. It was my first experience of any kind of panic attack, mental health issue. As I said before, I never really had any of that growing up. I was always super confident in everything that I did, similar to as Ollie was explaining. Um, it makes you paranoid, extremely paranoid. I mean, all we did was walk in the wrong side of the car park and we thought we'd broken this massive law and the police were looking for us it was just it was just horrendous so it was at that moment on we decided that we knew we had to um ditch the drugs and just get away from that lifestyle and it wasn't easy um all of our friends we'd actually met friends together at leeds festival and they were in a relationship and everyone was just thought we were absolutely crazy. You know, drugs are something that you quit when you're 40 and you've had a midlife crisis or you've been diagnosed with bowel cancer or something, you know. Why are you giving up drugs? You're only 20, 21. And I was like, oh, this is just demonic. Like, well, I probably didn't even say that. I was just like, no, new life. I'm, I, you know, I probably wasn't open enough about my faith. And it's just part of the sanctification. So yeah, um, it was time to ditch the drugs, hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> because there is power in the name Yeshua. Amen. So any time that you are in this experience or having a demonic experience, this includes things like, para um, I can't even remember, what's the name? Uh, uh, what's the, not astral project, sleep paralysis. Yeah, so if you're having sleep paralysis, that is a form of demonic um, attack. And the, a lot of people in this room have probably had that. A lot of people online are suffering with that. A lot of people in the world have that from their lifestyle. And I openly believe that that is a demonic attack because you are opening up these portals. People say, oh, I had that when I got back from such and such festival. I had that when I was really hungover. And yeah, you, you bring these things into your life by doing them things and you leave yourself open for attack. So. Me and Joe called out on the name Jesus at the time. We, we didn't know Yeshua was his name because I didn't quite understand that scripture's Bible just yet. And, but it worked. And I'm not going to lie, I was like, oh no, now I'm going to have to change my lifestyle. This really is true. You know, we can't mess around with this any longer. But I knew there was more to this. And I am quite a determined person. And once you know something's true, I, I was on a mission to find out because I've always been quite an inquisitive soul. And people look at Jonah and they go, oh, isn't he like Joe? And he is. But my family look at him and say, you were just like that as a baby, always looking around, always trying to discover things. And so, yeah, I've always been quite inquisitive. So that was me on a mission now, on a secret mission, not telling anyone, including my family. <laughs> yeah. But as you do these things, you, you, your walk goes on. And you do have to choose who you're going to serve because you'll get tests there. There'll be your friends going out on their birthday nights out or going and doing this on the Sabbath. And, or there'll be trips away um, to Ibiza. Obviously, at that point, I was like, completely, no way, no way, Ibiza. That, that's, that's not on the cards. But these temptations will come no matter what your old lifestyle has been. They'll creep up and the enemy and God, God lets it happen because he wants to test your heart. 
and it's through passing these tests that you will um, get a closer relationship with God. And I've, I've used this, um, these pictures as this is mine and Joe's trip to Iceland. Um, we used to go on a lot of trips, as you've seen. A lot of them were better, some of them were better than others, including this one, because a lot of them would start by some kind of uh, argument or paranoia or just, they just never really went well. We obviously had a great time, but there was just always something happening. And I remember this one specifically because it was the first time that we got off the plane and we prayed and we said, Father, guide us. Don't let us do anything um, that's not of you. Um, bless us, keep us in your peace and your shalom. And it really was the first time that we experienced his peace and shalom. We, there was no more arguing. <clears throat> there was just, it, it just, everything went smoothly. And that, that is how God spoke to us. God will speak to you in, in many other ways and show you that he's with you and he's walking with you and he's gone before you. And this was for me a very big thing. I, I was still young, I still think I was 18 or so. So it, it was just a blessing. Um, and around this time, I also was still doing things, I, you know, I still hadn't properly submit and submitted and I had a um, really, really bad nightmare. I had this dream that I had woke up and everything was, I'd fallen off a wall or something, I must have died, and everything just went black. And I was trying to knock back to the current reality to shout Joe, and they were all crying that like I died. And I was basically in shoal, and it was the hor most horrible experience of my life. And I believe it was the father saying to me, do you want to, do you want to be with me in my bosom, in my safe place, or do you want to go to this place where you'll be tormented? Because it, it, was, it was horrible. So I thank the Father for that in this time in my life, for showing me the darkness, showing me where I was going to go, and that there was an alternative. So if there's anyone watching this that is still dabbling with what it says not to in Galatians, just you have to stop if you know the truth. And if the truth hasn't set you free, then that's how you know you've got a problem. So truly ask God to show you what you need to change or where you're going to go if you don't change because for me it was very sobering and I thank him for that still to this day it's still as vivid in my mind as it was when I woke up so hallelujah for that so it was time then it was time it was time from to go from darkness into his marvelous light and this was 2018 and it was the year that the almond house was born Obviously, there was a couple of years in between that when I was really working on myself, myself and Joe, as you know, through his videos and testimonies, we got given a prophecy. We were baptised in Israel in the River Jordan in 2015, and we got given a prophecy, and it said, um, you and Joe, you're coming down out of an elevator. It's a great tribulation, and you'll be bringing uh, lots of young people to God. And it was at that moment as well, through very other things, me and Joe said, no, this is it now. And those three years were really working on God and we, we let all of the idols go. Everything in Galatians was gone. We knew now that we wanted to go to the good place and they, they were all gone. And it's when you make that change, um, it's not overnight, you know, it may take a few years, but that's when you come into your role and you come into where you're supposed to be. So here's some scriptures that um, we believe were for us. Um, this was at... Um, some baptisms, I got a remixed. Joe was um, blessed and anointed as a teacher of the Almond House. And these are the scriptures that we rest upon. It says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> but you are also a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvellous light. So, so praise Yah. Um, and since the Almond House has started, it's, it's just gone from good to better every year at Sukkot. We're doubled in numbers. Um, the people that we meet along this walk, it is primarily young people and also other age groups. And it, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to see people. <laughs> But it also comes with its challenges, you know. Um, there's a lot of people that aren't here this year um, that were here last year. And do faces come and go, and it is part of it, you know. People are at different stages in their walks, and it can be sad and it can be hard to have people that were here not along this walk. You think people will be walking with you for life, but 
back, you know, not to judge anybody. Look where I was and look how long it took me. Um, it's, a compl it's, it, it, it's, a it's not a race, it's, it's a journey. But yeah, it can be difficult to, to, and upsetting to see people and lose people along the way, but it's just part of it. You, you can't be discouraged by these things. You've just got to keep going and know that God will bring all things together in good time. So yeah, here's just some of the um, blessings that me and Joe both got at Praise Jar. This was before kids, all these amazing places that we travelled to. Um, because when you do come on your walk, you get blessed as well. It's like God is walking with you and he's showing you that your obedience brings massive blessings. So if there was anybody at that time, rejoice in it and just enjoy it because God is showing you that he is real and that you are, you are sacrificing for him because there must be a sacrifice as they did in the temple. They all brought their sacrifices to God. All we have to sacrifice now is working on ourselves, sanctifying ourselves, letting go of idols and sin. It's, e it's not as easy as it sounds, but as long as we're working towards that, we will be blessed. And if you're keeping his commandments, keeping his words, keeping his feasts, you will be blessed. And these are just some of the amazing places <laughs> that I have been through God and thanks to God, including Israel twice. And I never, ever would have thought I would have even, I didn't even know what Israel was. When I first went to Israel, all my family was saying to me, why are you in Syria or why are you in Afghanistan? I think another one was them. So, you know, God will really bless you and you've just got to keep going and he, he'll be walking with you. And just here's a couple of more. This is, a, this is the year that the Almond House was, was born. And this scripture came to me, it says, I'll pour out on you a blessing that there shall be not enough room to receive it. And this is my second trip to Israel. I'd already been in 2015 and looking back all of these places now, I'm thinking, how on earth did I fit that in? I had so much time, you know, before babies and COVID, but yeah, um, he, he is good and he will bless you. And rejoice in them blessings. Um, ask God to bless you if you're bringing him obedience and you're bringing him sacrifices. Um, and we also say to people, you know, if sometimes, you know, there is things going wrong in your life and you just need to ask God why. And if it's a tr trial's a difference, you know, to not get unblessed, he says that he will trial you, but it's to sanctify you. So you just need a connection with God and you need to ask him for all of these things. We are, we're promised, we're promised to rest on him. We're promised if we bring our tithes to him, if we bring our blessings to him and bring our time and morning and evening off offerings that he will bless us. And it's nothing to be, to be ashamed of or that we're being too proud because it is through God that we've done all these things. For example, me passing my driving test, that is a miracle, <laughs> a complete miracle. You just only need to ask Joe for 10 seconds and you probably won't get away for an hour because he's just got that many crazy stories. But yeah, it's great, God is good. But also um, I had to still deal with some strongholds in my life. It's not the end of it, you know, they, they come up. As soon as you think you've, you've, you've nailed one thing, that's it, another thing comes up. And for me, it was vanity, you know, Growing up on an island, um, everybody just constantly compares themselves to each other. Social media is massive. It's, it's a stronghold in a lot of young people's lives and they're constantly worried about what others may think of them. How many likes they're getting on such a picture. They need to prove to other people that they have this amazing life. And I was guilty of that. I was guilty of that. And it took me a long time to be shown that through God because <clears throat> he had to deal with my drug problem first. But you know, it, it was a humbling experience and anybody that has ever dealt with anything like acne or skin condition, it can really take you to a low place and it just consumes you. It's not because you're just worried that you look like this. It's, it goes deeper than that. It really, um, it just makes you insecure and it's all you're thinking about. It's the first thing you think of in the morning and that's the last thing you think of at night and that should be God. But there was a blessing in that and like everything, um, God can use all things for good. So as soon as I realised, it took me about four years to realise, oh, maybe I'm just being humbled here and I just need to submit to God. And the second I did that, I was, I was healed. Hallelujah. Because I humbled myself. I said, God, I know I'm proud. I know I'm vain. I, I, want, I want you to take that away from me. You know, there's nothing wrong with being careful about how you look or how, you know, taking pride in your, not pride, but, you know, in, in your presentation but it's a difference when you cross over and the energy that you give something, if it's consuming your whole life and 
you're constantly worried that you want to better yourself, as a lot of people, young women, to do today in society. And I know how much of a grip that takes of people's lives. Um, you see people with constant, um, just want to change themselves, and it, it, it's a stronghold and it takes complete control <coughs> of your life. So yeah, um, I met this guy on, on, we got an allotment and he said to me, oh, have you ever um, found any vitamins or taken any vitamins for your skin? And at this point I'd literally tried everything. Um, my wedding was coming up and I was going to pay private thousands of pounds, um, like lend money off grandparents to go and take this drug called Accutane. And if you suffered with acne, you'll know that this is a super harsh drug. You have to sign, um, something to say that you won't get pregnant and looking back now and all the research that I've done of it, praise yeah that I didn't do that because it has it can affect your gut issues and all all things later in life. And he said, No, you just need to take beta carotene, it's a vitamin A, but you need to mega dose it, you need to take twelve capsules a day. You can't get them in this country, you need to um buy them from America and I was just like, Oh, this guy's crazy. What does he know about skin? He's about sixty, you know. <laughs> 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 and I was like shying away like oh he's judging me you know and I thought no you need to stop this Be stop being proud thinking that you know everything just just listen and try one last time and anyway it worked and I've managed to make an Instagram and a business out of it myself helping other people and there's thousands of people have you looked on my page there's literally thousands of people that have been healed this way and it's a completely natural way and it's just an answer to my prayers and it's such a blessing that I can bless other people and yeah yeah hallelujah praise God all good things work for the good for those that love him hallelujah so obviously you think you've got it all sorted out you've got the house you've got the business you know you've got good skin and then <laughs> And then you get pregnant, and uh, yeah, that's just a, a trial in itself, as, as you women and men know. Um, but obviously, you, me and Joe are in this massive rush to get our house renovated and ready for baby Jonah to arrive. We literally had from October to January, and it was just, it was just crazy. Um, and we just finished renovating, and I was sat down from a tea, and I was due in a week's time and I just and I was like right it's time finally ready to just chill now not doing any more painting because I you get this urge to just go and paint and I was literally using Joe's sander to sand all this wood in the garden like I've never painted anything in my life and I was painting furniture <laughs> and it, it was just crazy and then I just heard Joe shouting uh, things that aren't very godly so I ran upstairs <laughs> and to discover that he had um burst or I don't even know what he was doing he's putting on the ca the lovely cast iron radiators in that picture and I think he was trying to tighten it or whatever I should have just wait for Alex you know <laughs> but he tries to do it himself bless him and uh, all this black stuff just came out everywhere all over our, um cream carpets cream walls it was just like completely just so stressful you know and I went to stay with Angie and obviously when all this was going on I had no carpet had no um curtains and obviously I went into labour you know <laughs> as you do it was just such a long long strenuous labour you know I had all these plans for this um home birth no pain relief um yeah <laughs> next time next time you know <laughs> <laughs> but it was long in itself I was literally awake for over 24 hours it was just and then Jonah was born and it was lovely, but I just knew there was something not right. It just something was wrong anyway. It was in the times of COVID and Joe couldn't be at the hospital. So we really wanted to just get home. So when I got home, um, we were literally just rejoicing, praising God. But in my spirit, I just felt like there's something not right. He wasn't feeding enough and struggling to, you know, try to breastfeed. And anyway, he stopped breathing and he, did, he turned blue in my arms. and. I just seen Joe's face, he was having a panic attack. The ambulance were there within literally like two seconds. Um, and we had to go back into hospital, he had sepsis. And it was just, it was just a really, really difficult time. And I think this was part of a ref refining process because it makes you call out to God in, the, in these struggles. Um, it makes you be stronger. Um, it, it gives you 
this fire to just rely on God because all we had was God in that moment you know planned on this natural home birth and a baby is getting pumped with antibiotics it was horrendous but you have God and um, I think it was like the third day in the hospital and they were testing for all kinds of things because babies that young it is hard to know what's wrong with them but they knew he was really sick and I was on the floor in the bathroom praying God just to show me that he's going to be okay and I opened my bible and I opened up to Jonah literally first page of Jonah so I knew everything was going to be okay it's just a part of these things these things happen in life it doesn't mean that we um God isn't with us it just means that um, God is making us strong. He's making us um, who he wants us to be and rely on him in all things. So if you're going through any trials, just know that he is with you and all good things work out. And now Jonah is everything that I prayed for. I prayed for a peaceful baby because um, his name is Jonah. It means peace. It means dove. And I prayed for all these things. I prayed for against asthma. I prayed against ADHD. <laughs> I prayed against all these crazy things that Joe struggled with in his childhood. And they've, you know, all of our prayers have been answered. So he's a blessing and everything is good. Um, apart from being up all night last night with his cold and my cold. But you know, <laughs> there's trials when I was gonna do my testimony, the trials still come. You know, I felt ill all day today. I was texting Jack like, oh, I might have to change it till tomorrow. He was like, well, when we're weak, he is made strong. And I was like, no, I've got to do this. So yeah, they're, they're still gonna come, but it's God testing your heart and God showing you that um, he is with you even in, in the valley, the shadow of death, he is with you. So, hallelujah. So this is my final slide now. And it's just to talk about my next chapter. And it's dedicated to being a wife and a mother. And it's Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. And that is my biggest hope now, that we can teach Jonah to love the Lord, to love his feasts, show him that these things can, don't have to be a burden. You don't have to be the weird one in school. You don't have to be <clears throat> the different one because there's an army rising up and this generation, the next generation to come, we need them to be strong for him. We need them to not go around the mountain 55 million times like I did. We need them not to, you know, the times of the teenage years, they're so important. Their brains are still developing. You don't need to be taking drugs when you're 16 to then have mental health issues when you're 25. You need to be free from all that. You need to be, have a clear mind to go into your adult years knowing that you are loved and you have a stable family and that you're going to find a wife and that you're going to get a good job, but not as an idol and you're not going to crave all these things, but you're going to be blessed through them, you know, but also not to be too strict and, and make it a burden for him and put him off God but really make it um a joy for him to follow the Lord so with that we just we just give you we give you glory God and thank you for all these trials thank you for all of the amazing things that you brought us on all of these amazing experience that you've allowed us to experience for your glory in the name of Jesus Yeshua Amen Thank you.